challenge on TJ Reid. Well, you can see that, you know, it was a nice slap into the face guard again and a dangerous tackle. A lot of frustration creeping in now to Tipperary players. Once again, the umpire is going for the white flag. They're in no rush whatsoever uh, to get to their flag. So uh, he gets there eventually, and it's another point for Henry Sheffield. In the middle of the field is Conor Mahan. Noel McGrath. Corrig Ma. Pumps it into the space. Tipperary need goals, and they need them very, very fast. That's a good score. Yeah, John O'Neill, you'd have to say, look lively. Two point, nice points since he came on, but you know, points at this stage, obviously no good, but um, he's took a couple of nice scores. And just going back to Henry there, you know, scored nine points today, all from play, I suppose, nothing from play, but still it's his leadership or something. They had the goal in the first half, great run, and he hadn't been in the game. But, you know, that's at this stage of his career, you can't be expecting him, and the other players have really stood up to the mark today and taken the pressure off him. One minute of additional time to be added on in this semi-final. JJ Delaney dancing away from John O'Neill's challenge. Kenny, superior in every sector at this stage. Long ball again down towards on Larkin. More trouble for Tipperary. Lovely pick up by Larkin, but Tipperary win the possession back. Pump down towards Shane McGrath. Battling here with Connor Fogarty. Stepping away is James Woodlock. Farris Pa Bork. Uh, Bork's effort is right and wide. Even Tipperary nine wides in this All-Ireland semi-final. But the reality is the Munster champions have been well beaten in this latter 35 minutes of action. They have indeed, Marty, and, uh, you know, I think there's a big message we sent out, Galway. Uh, you know, and it's good for Galway, I think, too, that Kenny have won like this today, because, you know, in case if there was ever going to be any complacency going into a final, uh, Galway are going to have to know that unless they're at their very, very best, and, you know, obviously Kilkenny will have the motivation of the Leinster final, but, you know, Galway can't let that worry them, they have to go back and do their work and get ready for the final, and there's another great score. There's a score from Henry now, I said he hadn't scored from play, and there's a great point from way out the field. Ten points for Henry Shefflin. You must have heard you, Michael, because that's his first point from play. And the full-time whistle blows in Croke Park. No question that Brian Cody is heading back to Croke Park to this venue that he's graced for so many years as a player and as a manager. It's a repeat of the Leinster hurling final, which Galway won. What about that for a mouth-watering prospect? Porig Mar can only sigh in disappointment as Richie Parr, Noel Hickey and Kilkenny show that they have the hunger, they have the appetite. And considering that the sides were level eight times, it's an amazing turnaround, an awesome performance by Kilkenny. And really, at times, they looked unstoppable. Henry Shefflin, despite getting a yellow card from the referee, can afford a smile. For Brendan Cummins, he's not every day of the week. He's beaten four times. Only one shot he might be disappointed with. The others was just simply unstoppable. Henry Shefflin scores ten times, once on play, encouraged by Michael Dyke. Absolutely. Well, Marty, I don't think he needs to be encouraged by me to, to score. He's an absolute, you know, the all-time greatest player probably that we've certainly seen. And, you know, what a performance by Kilkenny. You know, it's unusual you go after a match, you'd say, I can't remember one Tipperary player that maybe got the better of their man today. I think Kilkenny won every single uh, battle out there. They played absolutely fantastic stuff and uh, great performance by them. And, you know, it's back to the, really back to the drawing board for Tipperary. Three goals in the second half by Fogarty, Larkin and Reid gives this a very impressive scoreline. Before a crowd of 50,220, Kilkenny are back in the All-Ireland final for a record-breaking seventh All-Ireland time in a row. Full-time score in Croke Park. Kilkenny 424, Tipperary 150. In the commentary box on that All Ireland hurling semi final, Marty Morrissey and Michael Dignan. So it's Kilkenny who will face Galway in the 2012 All Ireland Senior Hurling Final. That, of course, will be on Sunday, September the 9th. Now, next Sunday, we'll be back at Croke Park for the first of the semi finals in the football championship. Cork against Donegal in the senior match, Mead against Mayo in the minor, and our coverage begins at a quarter past one on RTE2, and that will be in high definition. Cyril Farr, Jordan Nan, Tomás McCahey here with me in the studio. So, Cyril, are Kilkenny finished? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the goal. Thanks for the goal. We got that one right. Listen to me. We all know 
as far as I'm concerned, we're looking at the best team of all times, even if they lost today. But of course, the one is easier to say that. But they went in a point at half time down, mm. and they come out the second half, they get 315. All their forwards score. But you have to hand it to Brian Cody. He picked Kieran Joyce today, relatively unknown outside Kilkenny. Okay, we know in circles, but not that highly taught, you know, no one outside in the, in the inter county scene. Brilliant game. Mm. Like F F Fogarty steps up to Aidan Fogarty probably the best game of his life Owen Larkin hadn't been really shining all year yep. and next thing he goes out today and <coughs> turns it on they're the guys Fine. that turned on to it but mm. they really won it now Killian Buckley I met Brian at a, as a thing for cancer during the week and he told me Killian was going very well yeah. and he told me by the way I picked the team last Sunday but he said you've got the team wrong I didn't put in I hadn't Joyce in on the team but he told me Buckley was going very well which he showed there today when he came on for Rice the, the team didn't get weak but as they went on I was talking about the fitness well the fitness did come into it but like their strength their physicality their, 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 their scoring ability like you'd imagine Tip would have it as well. No, the head, but they were just blown out. They were beaten by a better team. And like that's Kilkenny are going to be a hot favourites going into this goal. It's probably good for Galway to see how good Kilkenny were. But mm. that's Kilkenny at full flow. Mm. And maybe Galway was the injection that they needed. Now, Brian did say to me as well that, that function that he knows how to play Galway, but he said, I don't know, are we good enough to beat them? Now, they know well deep down that they'll be figuring they're good enough. It's yeah. going to be a great game. But I feel honoured and privileged to have seen a fantastic game. Once it settled down, the game had a few shenanigans mm. going on. It could have gone out of control. Lucky enough, no one got a red card. But like, and that's the way it should be, I suppose. But like, they are a great team. People have to go back to the drawing board, but Kilkenny are going to take some, some sure. stopping. That match mm. reminded me, Ger, of it was like in the second half, an arm wrestle, where two fellas are eyeballing each other and then eventually one gives and your knuckles are on the on the table. Yeah, well, there's an old saying that they, if you don't learn from the mistakes of history, you're bound to repeat them. And they, 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 If you look at the, back, at the history of Kilkenny hurling, if you try wild physical stuff on Kilkenny, yeah. Kilkenny are going to come out on top eventually. Absolutely. You won't beat them with any kind of wild physical stuff. What Tipperary did there in the second half, with Lara Corbett's behaviour in the second half, was absolutely crazy stuff. Trying to mark a Kilkenny back, and he's supposed to be the main scorer for Tipperary. Now, we, as we said at half time, Tipperary were going, or Kilkenny were going to launch that fierce assault in the second half. And it was relentless. You know, the pace, they upped the pace, they upped the intensity, they kept their shape. Because mm. no matter what you do with them, they're yeah. going to keep their shape. shape yeah. They create the overlap, and then they go a point or two up. Next thing, they have a goal got. Game over. Game, Game over. And let's hear from the Kilkenny manager, Brian Cody. He's talking to Claire McNamara. Brian, is that as emphatic and as comprehensive a win as a, in your long time in charge of Kilkenny? That's a very satisfying win, Claire. Obviously, you know, I mean, half time, I think we were a point down, and obviously, a huge game in front of us, and we settled well in the second half. And obviously, we got goals, you know, which are crucial in a game like that. And we probably got very good goals as well. So, very satisfying. But, I mean, the prize for today is to get to the Hall Ireland final, and that's where we are. So, it's. Serious job ahead. We had expected this to be such a close, uh, tight encounter, and it was for, for much of the time. But it's simply awesome in the second half. You blew Tipperary away. Well, we played very well in the second half, you know. And again, it, it can turn on, on nothing sometimes, you know. I mean, you couldn't see that performance coming really. But we had created. Um, we scored one goal and created another good goal chance in the first half, which we didn't take. And you know, I think that probably their goal, I would have feel, was preventable by us as well. So. You know, we were going pretty well in the first half, but we certainly upped the gears in the second half, and we did play very well for sure. Uh, you were at one point down at the end of the first half. It was very physical at times. Things boiled over several times. I wouldn't say boiled over. No, I mean it's just the usual bit of pushing and shoving and stuff like that. You know, and that becomes exaggerated a small bit when two or more fellas go into push and shove. You know, so look, there's a great rivalry. It's hurling. It's a be all and end all. It's I mean we're in the other and find the Tipperary are gone now. So I mean everything at stake. You know, and there was nothing crazy out there and like that. It was just good manly stuff. You did lose Michael Rice though, but it didn't have a great impact as it happened. Yeah, Michael's a huge player for us, and he got a very, very bad finger injury. You know, he's went off to he had to go to hospital with and that. So, we're just hoping that he'll be okay for the final. But Killian came in and played really well. Now you set up uh, an All Ireland final with Galway again. You may have lost your your Leinster final, but you certainly sent out a huge message today that you're not going to give up your All Ireland title very easily. Well, we're not. Obviously, that would be the intention. But I mean, the last day we played Galway, there was only one team in it. You know, to give us a lesson, really. You know, and we were miles away, and they went on to follow that on with a great performance against Cork. I'm not going to start blowing, up, blowing them up and blowing us down or anything like that, but it's a huge game ahead, you know, and the reality of it again is, you know, either team is capable of beating the other, so something terrific to look forward to for a few weeks. I suppose many people thought, Brian, that maybe Kilkenny were vulnerable after that defeat earlier this summer, but you certainly uh, answered many of those questions today quite, uh, quite emphatically. Well, everybody is vulnerable in sport, you know, I mean, and it doesn't mean that if you lose one game that you're suddenly, you may be vulnerable, but you mightn't be finished. So, I mean, we're not finished, but we're always vulnerable, I suppose. You're looking forward to another All Ireland. Uh, 13 of the last 15 you'll have contested. I don't know for sure about that, but I mean, I look forward to this one for sure. It's, it's great. It's a fantastic time for any county to be in the All Ireland final, and you know, we're thrilled to be there.
Congratulations today, Brian. Thanks, Claire. Okay, Kelly, manager Brian Cody. Brian doesn't give much away, uh, but you can see his satisfaction at that. Oh, absolutely. What a, what a, what a performance. You know, and you're saying a half time going in, yeah. when you point down, you know, kind of the momentum was with Tipperary mm. at that kind of going in a half time, coming out of the second half. But they just totally, totally took over the game in the second half period. Dominated in their half back line, dominated in their full back line. And you feel sorry for the Tipperary defence because there's nothing they could do with ball raining down on top of them non stop. And I'm just gobsmacked and stunned by the Tipperary management on the basis of the way they played the game in the second half, particularly up front. I mean, they made no attempt to actually open up Kilkenny. They've seen against Galway how Galway could actually open up and open up wide. And instead, they wanted to take him on in the physical stakes. They had Bonnermar inside full forward. Bonnermar has been the best player at number 11 at centre forward. Our wing forward. Our wing forward. Mm -hmm. And they never, never attempted to open up the space to play the ball down the channels, to play it outside, to drag the Kilkenny guys. And they tried to match it up. And they got their answer. They were absolutely blown out of it. Yeah, they weren't the just beaten, Joe. I mean, there was a massive gap in that this scoreboard. This was a completely, complete demolition job. But yeah. so it just shows the greatness of that Kilkenny team. You know, uh, uh, we have said about trying them on the physical stakes, but even on the holding stakes, when mm. they up that pace and yeah. up that intensity and, and the work rate and the support play, you know, a man, and, and, and you know, Sullivan said at halftime about the catching in the air was brilliant. The second half, Brian Hogan, the catches, mm. Tommy Welsh, mm. should they control the air completely? Control, when you control completely. the air, you control, mm. you have the ball. Mm. And when you have mm. the ball, then they're able to lay it on, a man coming in, in support. It's, it, Brian Cody is always saying mm. it's a simple, simple game. game. And <laughs> it is a simple game the way they play it, even though to get a team playing it like is very, very difficult. Yeah. And all those people who go on with statistics mm. and the amount of times they've had to play the ball, they really don't indulge in that. They can play it anyway. They, they, they anyway, match match high, it, yeah. high, low, mm -hmm. fast or slow, doesn't matter what way it comes, they can play it. The and they always have that man to create the overlap, and when he gets it, they just punish the mistake of me. You were saying to me in the second half, uh, <laughs> sir, we were watching the second half, Just you were noting how Kilkenny was, you said, just driving the ball up the middle of the field all the time. I have to yeah. laugh, we'll be all coaching him if I said, low ball, cross field ball, get out in front. Kilkenny, it was like scud missiles. Mm. Get it direct, high up. Mm. Now they go up and field, and if they don't catch the knock it out to a runner, now the runner mightn't get it to hold. When he does, he's gone through. But more than likely, they'll catch it, turn, take a head on. It's very, as a boy said, it's a very, very simple game. But every man has to fight for his own ball. And the guy I'll pick out today would be Fogarty. Broke a leg, took a while to come back, and he does everything. He catches the whole left top, and he seems to switch it. But he knows himself what he's doing. But if you're coaching him, that's again, you'll be doing it the other way. He seems to do everything. We call it wrong, but he's very, very effective. Now he came back from, you know, nearly mission impossible. He fought for every. He was like a dog. He fought for every ball. He de his desire to go on and win the hairball. And as the boy said, like they were going on the ball, whereas Tip seemed to be trying to match up man for man and hitting belts. That's not the way to beat. Now Galway mm. kind of showed what can be done on a good day, but like. Kilkenny will know what Galway, they dragged the defence out the last day. That won't, that won't happen the next mm. day, it's going to be one hell of a game. But you'll have to admire Kilkenny because they took the belts, mm. they drove on, took mm. all the belts and won the game with some great hurling. And as it went on, all the forwards, even the first half, the, like most, most of the tip scores had come from Pair Burke from place balls I want to do from, from, from uh, general play but the tips the Kilkenny scores are all over the place popping I mean, here and there and once they got in the flow right. very hard to stop he's right I mean Tip had, did, did match up to him for the first period I mean they did match up on the physical stakes but when the game opens up then you must go and think about the scoreboard yes. you must push yeah. on but they never did that today Yeah. well you see the skill level of Kilkenny is just fantastic you can mm -hmm. take all the other attributes they have and everything else but that skill level when they get the ball they're not afraid to shoot for, for a point no. they're, they're not afraid to give a, a pass 60 yards away to have to take a chance and the diagonal ball today caused absolute havoc to that Tipperary defence. I always thought, you know, if you think of Tipperary giving away 24 points to Cork in the championship, they were vulnerable. And yeah. Kenny will watch, well, where's the weakness? The weakness is in the ball coming across rather than coming forward. Yeah. And all the cross ball today and all the scores mm. they got for that. It's just brilliant. OK, lads, we're headed for a short break here mm. on the programme. Back with more on today's All-Ireland Senior Hurling Semi-Final right after that.